All right, let's examine what points we can out of this example. First of all, you probably noticed I got this property info. I've got this method info. There's a whole bunch of different info classes. There's constructor info, and there's event info, and, and you kind of get the idea. Basically, there's an info type for every type of attribute you can give a class. You can give a class method. You can give a class fields. I didn't even do field info. Field info. All right, we can give it properties, we can give it events, and that sort of thing. Well, all these info classes, if I click on property info and hit F12 to look at the metadata here, property info inherits from member info. All right, and there's member info. And then let's uh, look at method info. If I F12 on method info, that says method info inherits method, in method base, F12, and then method base also inherits member info. So all these quote unquote uh, info classes inherit from member info. All right. Well, what does member info offer? There's declaring type. We'll talk about that in a future video. Um, module. We'll talk about when we get to assemblies. Reflected type. We'll talk about that too. It's just the base type for all of those members. That members of a class. It's not that hard. Now, something else I want to talk about. I've I've mentioned previously that that your .NET executables or DLLs, we call them assemblies, they have inside of them, they literally have data tables that are a lot like data tables you would get in a SQL Server database or anything like that. And if you don't know what that is, let me draw real quickly. I, I think I did this in a previous video, but we can do it again. If I have a table here of people information, I could store their first name in this column, their last name here, and maybe their social security number. It'd be like a, an Excel worksheet, if you would, if that helps, if you're not familiar with tables. But basically, every row of the table represents one instance of an object. So this would be a person. 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 And that's the idea. Well, anyway, in your .NET executables, there are tables that store that information. We can access that data via these objects, member info or field info or event info. They offer an object, oh, what is it? The, you probably will hear this term in computer science, O-R-M, called ORM. Right, there's several various acronyms that come out of this. I think object role modeling is the, the most mainstream one, but basically, uh, these info classes allow us, they give us objects uh, th that each instance of these objects represents one row of data in the property info table, for example, uh, for this vector type. Okay, anyway, nice. Uh, we call that object, oh, ORM object relational mapping as well. So this is an object and we're relationally mapping it to a row in the table. It sounds so technical, but it's pretty basic. One row of a table makes w maps to one instance of an object. Hopefully uh, not too insane. Now, I also want to point out, look how dynamic this is. I mean, I passed two string, literally in a string. Let's see these double quotes mean string literal. If, if you don't get any of this right, then stuff, weary stiff stuff happens. Let me control U to make that L a lowercase and control F5 here. And now it's going to pop and say, hey, um, object not null reference exception. Okay, and the reason why that is is because I said, hey, go give me a method and it didn't find it. In fact, let me put a breakpoint here. F5, right line info is null because it wasn't able to find right line. All right, that's a lowercase l. So if you're doing this string type of stuff, uh, you got to make sure that the strings are correct. And then also, uh, the arguments here. In, in right line's case, remember console.right line, console right line, there are 19 overloads. And basically, one overlo overload for every primitive value type. And then we get an object and that sort of thing. There's a few that takes these formatting arrays and that kind of thing. But there's not one that takes, I don't know, let's do type of string, type, of, let's get this down on a new row. Remember, this represents our argument types we're trying to find for the overload. Type of int, I'm totally making this up. Type of char, I'm pretty sure there is not an overload of right line that has these things. So if I run this F5, again, it comes back. Oh, look at that. That's actually interesting. I didn't expect that. Look at that. String, object, object. So the int and the char said, hey, if I pass an int and a char, those can both upcast to an object. That's funny how that worked out. String, object, object. Well, let me, I really want this to bomb. Let me highlight this. Control C, V, 
comma v comma v comma v let's see if it resolves that all right f5 and right line info is down no let's say hey I, there's no there's no overload for that that doesn't make sense so <sighs> anyway uh let's bring that back though let me control z all that and get back to our string here okay we do know there's a right line that takes a string we use it quite often but then i want to pass let's let's pass a float here 4.5 F, let's see what happens there. Control F5, and the object has some invalid. Cannot convert, whoops, what did that say? Cannot convert from float array to object array. Of course, I have to be explicit here and say object this time. Okay, thank you, value types. Let's run that, and oh, it blows up. It says, hey, argument exception. All right, object of type system.single, which is a float, cannot be converted to a string. Well, it can be if we call two string on it, but it's the conversion, the built-in conversion doesn't work out that way. So it's like, I don't know what to do. All right, so, anyway, I think that's about all the things I wanted to point out with this example. Again, if you start programming like this, please don't apply for a job wherever I work. All right, it's just an idea to say, hey, you can go to the max and do some serious reflection.